Welcome back everybody, Prof Bowden here again with the next installment of our HTML website series. Last time, we took our new CSS knowledge for a spin, creating some basic styling for our HTML structure. Today, we're going to make some changes to both our HTML structure and our CSS styling to punch things up a bit, and we'll learn a couple of new CSS abilities while we're at it. As you can see, I have my HTML page open to preview in my browser here on the right. I also have my HTML code and my CSS page open over here on the left. Now, our website on the right looks a little... awful. Let's use CSS to give it a bit more style. First, we'll get rid of all these lines between everything, and leave just one around the page itself. If we flip from our HTML code to our CSS, we can find the entry that is causing all those lines to show up. We styled the div element with a border, which means every div on the page has a line around every side of it. If we remove that entry, the line should go away. Highlight the entire entry from div through the first closed bracket and delete it. Save and refresh our page, and we see that the lines are all gone, but so is the border around our page. To get it back, we need to consult the HTML code to find the ID of the one div element that wraps around all of our other divs. Oh no! We didn't give it one! While we could use the class, container, to give it style, that would mean that anything else we might put into that class would also show up with a border. It's a risky chance to take. Instead, let's just modify our HTML a bit to give it both a class and an ID. Click inside the closing bracket of that div and type in ID equals quote page wrapper one word quote. We don't need to add a closing bracket for anything because we're changing an existing element. Now, we've got an ID to work with. Back to the CSS. Down where I have my other ID styled, I'm going to create a new CSS listing. Pound page wrapper. Don't forget your open and close brackets. We're going to give this ID a border around it. If you remember your CSS from before, go ahead and pause this video and type it in, and then come back. To create styling, remember that we have to tell the CSS not only what we want to style, the page wrapper div, but also what about that thing we want to style, in this case the border. Between our brackets, type in border colon 1px black solid semicolon. Never forget your semicolon at the end, as that tells the browser that it's reached the end of that command. Save our work and refresh the page. We have a border around the whole thing now. Of course, that makes our page look a bit jumbled. Let's make a couple more quick changes to sort out some of these elements a bit. First, let's give the header a bit more style. We've already listed stuff for that in the CSS, so let's go back there. First, let's give it a color in the background. Click in the style entry we created for the header class and drop down to a new line. To create a background color, we type background-color colon, and then our common color, which makes use of some of the built-in standards for browsers, or our hex code color. For now, let's keep it simple and give it a background color of maroon. Don't forget your semicolon at the end of the line. Now, this is going to make our header very hard to read. If you want to see for yourself, pause the video, save your work, and refresh your page in the browser. This serves as a good reminder to us. Always consider the user's experience when designing a page and implementing style. Luckily, there's a quick fix for that. We can either change the background color from maroon or we can change the color of the text. Since we're always up for learning new things, let's change the color of the text. Click the cursor right after the semicolon in one of the lines in the header entry on our CSS page and drop to a new line. Changing text color is even easier than changing the background color. Just type color colon and the color you want. Let's use white here with our trusty semicolon at the end. Save and refresh. Let's make one more change today. This one will give us some practice editing our HTML structure. We'll take this footer out of our primary page, make it small text, and move it to the right side. For this, click back to the HTML page in our editor and find the div that we gave the footer class. Right now, this is wrapped up in that div with the ID page wrapper. To take it out, we need to make sure that the entire div is outside of the page wrapper div. If we look below our footer, we see the end of the page wrapper div tag. Highlight that and hit delete. 
We could just cut and paste it, but where's the fun in that? Now we have no end to our page wrapper div. HTML doesn't like that sort of ambiguity, particularly if we move to programming in JavaScript afterwards. We need to put that end back in, but before the footer div. Easy. Click in front of the entire div element for footer before the open bracket and type in open bracket slash div close bracket. That handles the structure, but doesn't give it any style. Back to the CSS we go. We don't have an entry for that footer div yet, so let's create one using its class. Create an entry for it. Pause this video to try it yourself and then come back. We create the entry by typing period to tell the browser that we're talking about a class instead of an element or ID, and then footer with, as always, our open and closed curly style brackets. You may remember how to move the text to the right. Text dash align colon right semicolon. If you look at the special link entry below, you can probably figure out how to make the font size smaller. Font dash size colon small semicolon. For good measure, let's also put it in italics. To do this, we'll need a new property to style. Font style. Type font dash style colon italics semicolon. Save the work, refresh the browser. Now we've got a border around our page, a header that stands out from the rest, and a footer just waiting to be replaced with your copyright information. Next time, we'll start tackling that mess inside our content area and introduce even more CSS styling options. Margin, padding, and float. See you then.